if you operate in the FOSS space, you should at least know about the mainstream software licenses. Different versions of the GPL, the MPL, AGPL, LGPL, permissive licenses like the MIT license and different versions of the BSD license. But let's talk about some of the more esoteric licenses, licenses that you probably shouldn't be using. Some of them permissive to the point of being in the public domain and others not so much. And I'll save the one that I saw that made me want to make this video right till the end. Let's start with one that many of you have probably heard of, the WTPFL, do what the F you want to public license. There is a long ongoing battle between GPL zealots and BSD fanatics about which license type is the most free of the two. In fact, both license types have unacceptable obnoxious clauses such as reproducing a huge disclaimer that is written in all caps that severely restrain our freedoms. The WTPFL can solve this problem. When analysing whether a license is free or not, you usually check that it allows free usage, modification and redistribution. Then you check that the additional restrictions do not impair fundamental freedoms. The WTPFL renders this task trivial. It allows everything and has no additional restrictions. How could life be easier? You just do whatever the F you want. And this is the entire license. Everyone is permitted to copy and redistribute verbatim or modified copies of this license document and changing it is allowed as long as the name is changed. Do what the F you want to public license terms and conditions for copying, distribution and modification. You just do what the F you want. Now, this is obviously a joke license, trying to meme on the arguments about freedom between GPL and BSD. But, even though that's the case, I do see people actually using this license as a serious license in place of things like Unlicensed, Zero BSD, MIT Zero, CCO Zero, and things like this, using it sort of as a public domain license. This license, to the best of my understanding, has never been legally tested, so how well that actually works, I cannot really say, but it doesn't stop people from using it. The next license is a very similar kind of license with one interesting addition. This is the GLWTS license, or the Good Luck With That S license, also called here the Not Safe For Work license, which is pretty much the exact same thing, with this addition down the bottom here. In no event shall the authors be liable for any claim, damages, or other liability, whether in an action of contract, tort, or otherwise, arising from, out of, or in connection with the software, or the use or other dealings in the software. And that sounds like very legalese way of describing it. And there's a good reason for that, because that is literally just copied from the bottom of the MIT license. That license is way too similar to the first one. Let's look at something actually different. Something that is probably entirely unenforceable. This is the Hot Potato license. All rights reserved by the last person to commit a change to this repository, except for the right to commit changes to this repository, which is hereby granted to all inhabitants of the Milky Way galaxy for the purpose of committing changes to this repository. Said in a more straightforward way, the last person to commit to the repository owns all rights over the code, until the next person commits to the code base and Anybody out there, it doesn't matter if you've ever written a line of code, it doesn't matter if you're a malware developer, it doesn't matter whatsoever, every single person has the right to commit to this repo. At least those living within the Milky Way galaxy. If you happen to be an alien visiting from another galaxy, you don't have the right to commit to this repo. But I would imagine, you know, if we discover aliens in other galaxies, maybe we'll extend this license to allow them as well. For reasons that should be obvious, this is really, really dumb. In case it's not obvious, how do you get someone to relinquish the rights to the repo once they have the rights to the repo? Why don't they just keep the repo and just ignore the license? Are you going to try to like go to a lawyer and say, the hot potato license is on it and they didn't give me the rights to use it? No, it's not going to happen. The lawyer is going to look at you and say, I'm sorry, what license? Why are you trying to get involved with that? This is not... 
I'm not a lawyer, but even I can say this is probably not legally enforceable. But it would be a neat experiment if you had some, like, software running on top of it that automatically did that migration. What about a license a bit easier to enforce? And what if you particularly don't like one person? That person being Richard Stallman. I have the perfect license for you. The ABRMS. Anyone but Richard M. Stallman license. Do anything you want with this program, with the exceptions listed below under exceptions. This software is provided as is, with no warranty of any kind. In the unlikely event that you happen to make a zillion bucks off of this, then good for you. Consider buying a homeless person a meal. In a way, you could call this license a charity wear license. Exceptions. Richard M. Stallman, the guy behind GNU, etc., may not make use of or redistribute this program or any of its derivatives. Now, this etc. is really important, because what if there is another Richard M. Stallman out there? You didn't specify that it was particularly the guy behind GNU. You also said etc., so that Richard M. Stallman would also be included. Also, it doesn't define the use of Richard M. Stallman. Does this only count for your legal name? What about if your screen name is Richard M. Stallman? What if your nickname is Richard M. Stallman? And what about the common shorthand for Richard M. Stallman, RMS? Are any of those included? Well, none of that's defined, so probably. Considering the restriction, you could probably say this isn't an open source or free software license, but let's just go full throttle, and talk about something that absolutely isn't. This is the Passive Aggressive License. If you do any work at all in the FOSS space, this is going to look very familiar, because it's based on the MIT license, and for the most part, it's an identical clone of it, with the exception of one clause. Permission is hereby granted free of charge to any person obtaining a copy of this software and associated documentation files, the software, to deal in the software without restriction, including without limitation, the rights to copy, modify, merge, publish, distribute, sublicense, and or sell copies of the software, but not including the right to run, execute, or use the software or any executable binaries built from the source code. What that's saying is you can do whatever you want with the code, except compile it and run it. But considering that it's basically the MIT license, you can sub-license it. So if you sub-license the code into a sensible license like the MIT license, then I assume that you could compile and run it then. I don't think that restriction would still apply, but I'm not a lawyer. This license is literally unusable for software, so let's go in a more usable direction, and let's go in a more religious direction. This is the Kartharos license. Kartharos is the Greek word for pure, and correspondingly the purpose of the Kartharos license is to prevent the license work from being used to promote destructive activities or to produce other impure or destructive works. With the Carthros license, we want to promote the openness, sharing, and collaboration that is common in the open source community, while at the same time protecting the people who may otherwise become victims of the destructive application of our shared works. We want the works that we share to be uplifting and helpful, and we want them to be used to benefit people. All of that sounds nice so far. To accomplish these goals, this license seeks to put limits on what people are allowed to do with the license work. This includes, among other things, disallowing the work to be incorporated in or used to produce sexually suggestive or explicit content, which we believe is mentally, psychologically, and spiritually harmful. The definition of what is good can be considered highly subjective. In order to maintain objectivity in a highly subjective matter, there must be some source of truth from which we derive said objectivity. The source of truth for the Carthros license and where the definition of good and pure come from the word of God, the Holy Bible. The Carthros license is based on the premise that the full 66 books of the Holy Bible are 100% true and inspired by God, and that he alone is the ultimate authority for what is good and just. 
and down below, they have a list of things you're not allowed to do with the software. Now, initially, I would have thought this was satire. It kind of does read like it, but if it is satire, it's really dedicated satire. The creators of the license also have a website where they go over all of the same stuff, they're indie game developers, and they do have software license under this license. Also, some of the references at the bottom of the license are linking to actual serious licenses that should be a joke, like the Hippocratic license and the No Harm license. So I'm not completely convinced one way or the other. One thing I am convinced on is the Saltar license. This is another one of those, I took the MIT license and then added an additional clause to it. In this case, you also agree to give me your first child to immolate it to the devil when the summer solstice has a full moon. Whilst not being the reason I made this video, my personal favourite license is the Bandtown license. The licenses for most software are designed to allow you to use the software in legitimate enterprise. By contrast, the Bandtown public license is intended to make sure you only use software for criminal conduct. Minor technical infractions not counting, you must break the law, you must piss all over the spirit of it as well. To use this license, you may do whatever the F you please with the content, provided you commit in the use of the content at least three violations of any of the following parts of the United States Criminal Code, including things like Civil disorders, conspiracy to commit offence or to defraud the United States, disclosure of classified information, riots, and all of this other stuff on the list. One thing I can easily achieve is broadcasting obscene language. If you're not already subscribed, go check out my podcast and my gaming streams. The final license I want to talk about is the Beerware license. This is the entire thing. PHK at freebsd.org wrote this file. As long as you retain this notice, you can do whatever you want with this stuff. If we meet someday and you think this stuff is worth it, you can buy me a beer in return. Paul Henning Kump. Much like the WTPFL, the author was just sick of this argument about freedom. Is GNU better? Is BSD better? Obviously, this person is with BSD, so they probably lean more towards that permissive side, but either way, this license just lets you do whatever you want. And if you want to be nice and you meet the developer, hey, buy him a drink and have a chat. But what makes this one special compared to the earlier licenses? Well, the reason I heard about this is someone sent me this picture. This is a picture of some of the licenses being used on the PlayStation 3. And right in the middle here... The Beerware License. There is some random library on the PS3 that is using this license. This is a license that actually gets used in the real world. Also, the Fedora Project has commented on this. This license is extremely permissive and falls under the copyright only category of licenses, where it is effectively in the public domain, but copyright is still retained. The license contains an optional clause where if the recipient feels the license work is worth it, they have the option to purchase the copyright holder a beer. If this were mandatory, it would make this license non-free, but since this is optional, it does not consist of a use restriction. As written, this license is free and GPL compatible. Personally, I am not a fan of beer. I'm happy to buy you a beer, but I'm probably going to have a cider instead. At the end of the day, most of these licenses probably shouldn't be used. Yes, some of them are neat, like the WTPFL, but I would recommend sticking with some of the more mainstream licenses that are well understood, the legal requirements and the legal restrictions that are attached to them. Don't go out there, start writing your own license or using these esoteric licenses unless your intention is just to make a project that is a joke. If that's the case, go ahead. But if you want people to actually be able to use it, please just use a normal license. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did you know about any of these licenses? Have you actually used some of them or interact with code that make use of them? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over 
these amazing people over here. Check out the Patreon, Scribes, Dilly, Barrow Bay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I will happily take your side of donations. Daytime,